Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, my name is Eystein Grevelen, and I uh, work on Alibaba's PolarDB, which is based on MySQL. I used to work in the uh, MySQL optimizer team for 10 years. So my talk today is about the analytical queries in MySQL. I will present some results from comparing MySQL with MariaDB and Postgres, discuss some special issues with disbound queries, and show some ways we ca you can improve the execution of complex queries in MySQL. I will also discuss a hash join, which, which is a recent feature of MySQL. And then I will conclude with a discussion on how MySQL could be improved to support uh, analytical queries. There's a lot of material in this presentation for 30 minutes, so I will not be able to go into all the details on the slides. So feel free to con contact me in the uh, Slack channel afterwards if you have questions. So my, my school sweet spot had traditionally been online transaction processing. And it became popular because it could support a very high transaction throughput for web application. But if you want to do serious analytical processing, you will often export the data from your OLTP system to another data store that is specialized for this purpose. And many of those systems today, like for example, Snowflake is based on a column store technology. However, there are quite a few users who want to avoid dealing with another system and rather run a few analytical queries on the OLTP system. And this presentation is for those users. In later years, people have started to talk about a hybrid system categorized as HTAP, where a row store and a column store are tightly integrated into the same systems. For example, MariaDB column store or MySQL analytics service. But I will not discuss those in this presentation. To evaluate the performance of analytical queries, the TPC organization has specified two benchmarks with decision support queries. In this presentation, we will focus on the TPCH, which has 22 complex queries for a pretty simple schema with uniform data distribution. There is also a newer benchmark, TPCDS, which has many more queries and a more complex schema. But the TPCH has more enough issues for us to discuss in this presentation. DBT3 is an open source implementation of TPCH. It implements the three tests specified by TPCH, but in this presentation, we will only look at the execution time for individual queries. Unfortunately, the implementation does not always follow the TPCA specification. For example, uh, the specification only allows indexes on form keys and date columns, while the Postgres implementation adds a lot of special in specialized indexes that are targeted towards specific queries. Adding that many indexes to an OLTP system is not very, a very good idea since it will reduce the performance of insert, update and delete, update and delete operations. I've also seen a comparison with MySQL from vendors of uh, column store systems that compare MySQL with the MySQL where no indexes are created at all. And I don't think that is a very um, useful either. So, so here we take the middle way and we use the uh, TPC specification with respect to indexes. So here's an overview and a tip of the TPC H schema. It is a database for ordering parts. There are suppliers that supply parts and customers they may, that may order multiple parts in each order. And the scale factor determines the database size. And for scale factor one, there's one gigabyte of raw data. So here are the results from running 22 TPCH queries with scale factor 10 databases for MySQL 5.7, MySQL 8, MariaDB 10.5, and Postgres version 13. So to be able to present it all in one diagram, I have scaled the results so that the execution time for MySQL 5.7 is set, always set to one. We do not have time to go into all the details here, but we see that MariaDB is significantly slower for five queries. And the common reason seems to be that less efficient join orders are used for those queries. 
At the same time, we see that MariaDB is faster than the MySQL for 12 of the 22 queries. If you zoom in a bit, we clearly see that Postgres is the over, overall winner here. It is fastest for 15 queries and often more than 50% faster than the others. And I do not claim to be a Postgres expert, so there's probably a ways to improve the performance even further. So not also that for MariaDB, I did not turn on optimizer features that are not on by default. So there might be room for improvements there too. So some details of the configuration. We used a 32 gigabyte buffer pool, and then indexes and everything, the database size for MySQL and MariaDB is around 20 gigabyte. So all the data fit in memory. We also bound the server processes to one specific socket, so we should not, uh, should not get any NUMA effects here. And I tried to make the working memory for each query about the same in all systems. So for MySQL and MariaDB, we turned off the adaptive hash index, since it often gives unstable performance. And also to have any effect, we would have to run the same, or the same data pages has to be accessed many times. And that is not necessarily common for the types of query we are running here. We have also turned off parallel execution in, in Postgres. And for more details, you can see the link here, which will show the uh, test script used, the config files, and the results uh, from the tests. If you go for 5.7 and 8.0 on MySQL, we see that there's a few queries where 8.0 is slower, but also several where it's faster. And we will take a closer look at these queries. Starting with the good news first. So query 21, it's improved by 89% since the optimizer now uses information from InnoDB about whether the data is in memory or on disk to better, pick a better join order. And this query also uh, benefits from the newly added uh, transformation from exists to in, which means that semi-joined may be used. So the total improvement is 90%. Semi-joined will also be used for query four for the same reason. For query 15, I've rewritten the query to use a common table expression instead of a view. This is an approved variant by TPCC, and the execution time in, is cut in half since the materialization of the CTE can be reused. So we will no longer do two materialization of the same query. There are two queries 10 and 11 that benefits from the using the new temp table engine. This engine is not necessarily faster, but all queries share a one gigabyte memory buffer, while for the old memory engine, by default, only used 16 megabyte per temporary table before it moved the data to disk. And for query 18, we haven't really found out why it's, it's better. Maybe it has benefited from the new iterator-based execution framework in MySQL 8. For the slower queries, uh, query 6 and query 20 have query plans that are not as good as in 5.7. And we will look closer at these queries in, in just a moment. Query 19 does a lot of string comparisons. So the switch from Latin 1 in 5.7 to UTF-8 hurts it, this query. But if you change to use Latin 1 in 8, the performance is comparable to 5.7. And if you use UTF-8 in both, it MySQL 8 should be faster since its new UTF-8 MB4 collations are much more efficient than the old collations. Query 16 has a new query plan that uses anti-join, but this is, that is not the reason for its slowdown since the old plan is even slower in 8. Okay, so... Um, so far, we discussed shown results from running with all data in memory, and we will discuss issues related to disk-bound queries now. So we are using a pre pretty fast SSD disk with an NVMe interface. And we use a buffer pool of only one gigabyte so that most data will have to be fetched from disk. It is uh, important to use O-direct in this case. Otherwise, the data will be cached in the file system buffer. My machine has 256 gigabyte of memory, so I would have to have several terabytes of data to simulate a disk-bound system without using O-direct. And the results will probably not be finished for this presentation. 
So Postgres does not support ODirect. So this experiment does not really make sense for Postgres. I have seen many presentations where they use the first query after start build to represent the disk bound load. That is not very useful because as we will see, one of the main characteristics of a disk bound query is that the same page may have to be read from disk multiple times. So that, since it may have been uh, evicted from the buffer pool between the accesses. I set the NODB all blocks time to zero since the default setting I've shown to give large variations in the execution times. Also for the disk bound load, we should turn on batch key access for OBKA. And since the cost function for BKA is not working very well, we will turn it off and always use BKA for disk bound load. And BKA will use the join buffer and we have set it that to 64 megabyte. megabyte. BKA is used for index nested loop joins. We fill up our join buffer with the keys from the first table. Then these keys will be used for lookup in the index of the next table. And the primary keys of the matching rows are stored in a new join buffer, which are then sorted in primary key order before accessing the second table. This way, we read all the rows from the same page at, the side at once, and we do not risk that the page is ejected from the buffer pool between accesses. If the join buffer cannot hold all the keys, we will have to repeat the process, fill up the join buffer again, sort the keys, do another scan, and so on until we have processed all the rows. Uh, if we look at the effects of BK if you have for TPSH query 13, if you turn on the BK by setting the optimizer switch, as we mentioned on the previous slide, we see that explain indicates that BKA will be used. To investigate the effects of BKA, we use the file summary by event name table in performance schema and look at statistics for accesses to the InnoDB tables. We see that without BKA, we read more than 10 times as many pages as uh, with BK, with BK. Also, the av average IO read latency is much lower with BK. I think part of the reason is probably that InnoDB will do prefetching of pages when it detects that the pages are read in sequence. So there are 10 TPCH queries with, which will use BK, and for three of them, including query 13, the query response time is reduced by over 90%. Three more queries are reduced by 50 to 85%, while the shortest running queries see no significant improvement. How big a benefit you, we will get from BKA will depend on the size of the joint buffer. For query 13, we see that you will get most of the improvement if you have a, a, a joint buffer of only eight megabytes, but you can still cut the execution time by, by almost a half by going from eight to 64 megabytes. And note also that if the join buffer is very small, the B BKA can have a ne negative effect on the response time. Okay, so now we will look at how you can improve performance of some of these complex queries. One way to improve the performance is to use optimizer hints to make the optimizer pick a bit big different query plan, and we usually show some examples of that. And they've already seen examples of how we can set parameters like the buffer pool size and the joint buffer pool size to improve the query performance. And we can improve the statistics so that the optimizer makes better decisions. Sometimes we can rewrite the queries so they will be executed more efficiently. And we can create, of course, new indexes that can speed up queries. Uh, however, in order to use hash join currently in MySQL, you may actually need to hide indexes, and we will get back to that. So remember that we had some queries that were slower in 8 than in 5.7. One of them was query 6. And the reason it's slower is because it's using our index, index range scan instead of a full table scan. 
As we see from the graph, index range scan is faster than the table scan if the range is small. In this case, the tipping point is when the date range is larger than seven months, which is around 8% of the total table size. However, we see that the optimizer prefers index range scans up to just about 12 months. And since the range for query six is one year, we see that there is a very little change in the estimates could cause the query to run 40% faster or slower. But by adding an index hint to tell the optimizer to ignore the index for this query, we see that we can actually get query six to perform better in 8.0 than it did in 5.7. For query 20, which was almost three times slower in eight than in 5.7, the problem is that the optimizer picks an inefficient join order. The root cause of the problem is that we do not have any good estimates of the filtering facts of the predicate on PU name, since the histogram implementation does not support estimates for like prefixes. And what makes that even worse is that the cost of subqueries are not considered. So the cost of picking a join order where the subquery is executed before the filtering of parts is greatly underestimated by the uh, query optimizer. If you look at the query plans, we see that in 5.7, parts comes before parts up, while in MySQL 8, the order is reversed. And we also see that the filtering estimate for part is 11%, while the re in real life, it's close to 1%. So we can fix the performance on query 20 by adding a join order hint that tells the optimizer that parts should become before parts. And we see that the result is an execution time that is slow, it, it's, it's lower than for 5.7. Another way to improve query performance is to ensure that the statistics used by the optimizer is accurate. And InnoDB maintains statistics on the number of distinct values for index columns. However, the default sampling rate is very low and can be significantly increased without much effects on performance. For my test, I actually set it higher than the number of pages in the largest table, which was a bit more than half a million. And so that analyzed table will uh, read all pages. And it still took less than five minutes to do all, all the tables. However, if you set it this high, you may consider to turn off the automatic recalculation and schedule your analyzed table manually so you do not get surprises to concurrent load when the automatic recalculations are performed. Not also that much of this index statistics changed pretty slowly. Statistics like number of orders per day and items per order are pretty stable. So you don't really need to run analyzed table that, that often. For MySQL 8, I recommend adding histograms on all columns that are used in conditions, especially if you're not the first column of an index. Since the data distribution for TPCH is mostly uniform, it did not change the, I did not change the default settings, but for non-uniform data, one may consider increasing the amount of memory used when creating histograms to get an increased sample rate. Some histograms may need frequent updates to be accurate. For example, if you do not update histograms on a date column daily, the estimates for a number of recent events may be far off. Other columns, like for example, order status, will probably not have, prob will be, probably be pretty stable. So you, you will not need to, that frequent updates. A few words on the statistics for MariaDB and Postgres. For MariaDB, the index st statistics is similar to MySQL. Uh, while the histograms are on by default and are automatically generated when you run an analyzed table. For Postgres, I use the default settings. I tried experimenting with the increasing the default statistics target, uh, and I got a lot of new query plans, but they did not, on average, improve anything. And there's also more stat uh, advanced statistics that are in Postgres that I did not enable. You can also get better performance by reverting your queries. 
In recent version, MySQL has um, added some rewrites automatically. Uh, and MySQL 8 has introduced several new variants of automatic transformation that you, you may do manually if you don't use older versions of MySQL. And I've all, all earlier blogged about a few ways to rewrite your queries. So today I will focus on how window functions can be used to improve performance. A few queries in the TPCH use a pattern like what we see here for TPCH query 17. We used a non-correlated subquery to compute some results. And then the main query will compare with this result. For query 17, we will compute the average quantity ordered for some type of parts. And then we will find the orders with less than 20% of the average quantity. This way, the query will have to read the line item table twice. But if we use window functions, we can both compute the average and find the price for relevant parts in the same scan. So we are using a CTE for this here, but you could, of course, use a derived table instead. So here we say the results for the uh, TPCH queries that may be rewritten to use a window function. So you see the mileage does vary here. Uh, for query 17, the execution time is reduced by 80% from six and a half to 1.3 seconds. Well, and the savings, the, the savings will depend on how large part of the total work is saved by avoiding the extra tables. So for query 15, there is no savings since as we already discussed, we have avoided the double table access by using a CTE instead of a view. So the next topic is hash join, which has been introduced in MySQL 8. But unfortunately, hash join will never be used if it's possible to use, use an index for nested loops join. So in order to use hash join, we will have to hide the index from the optimizer. And for that, we can use a, a, an index hint, like in this example for query 13. So if we compare the result of hash join with the results from B using BK that we presented earlier, we see that the execution time is reduced by almost two thirds in the disk bound case. Notice, all, notice also that the in memory is not much faster than disk bound. And this shows that the disk based table scan is really fast. And it is the joint processing that there actually is the limiting factor in, the, in, in this case. So when should we use hash join? So this shows one example where we are running a simple two table join where we vary the selectivity of the first table. The curves are very similar to the ones I showed earlier for index versus table scan. Uh, and for low selectivity factors, nested loop join is best. While for high selectivity factors, one should use hash join. And note that the performance of hash join depends on the size of the join buffer. And in this uh, result, we, we uh, use the join buffer of two gigabytes so that the entire hash table fits in the join buffer. Also, the crossing point here uh, between uh, uh, when to use hash join or not will depend significantly if, depending on uh, the type of, of uh, tables involved. So, it could be at 10% or, or always be better to use hash join and so on. But if we use, low, uh, use lower buffer sizes, we see that the performance varies. If the performance, if the join buffer is almost large enough, like the 512 megabyte case, the performance is a bit unstable. According to the response I got on a bug I filed, this will be fixed in 8.0.23. We see that we can still get pretty good, pretty good performance with a join buffer of 64 megabyte. However, if the join buffer is too small, like 4 megabyte, we hit the limit on the number of files that hash join may use. And then each chunk file will, have, will be too big for the join buffer, and it will have to be partitioned. And this means that each chunk file for the probe input will have to be processed multiple times. In order to know how much memory is needed, we can check the memory summary table in the performance schema for the hash join event. 
if the total number of allocation is greater than the high watermark for unfreed allocation, we know that the hybrid hash join has been used. If the numbers are equal, in memory hash join was used. And we can also see the total amount of memory used and the maximum size used for the join buffer. Okay, so to conclude my presentation, I will talk a little bit about what feature could be implemented to better support analytical queries. One great thing would be support for parallel queries. And in Alibaba, we actually have implemented parallel query for our MySQL-based PolarDB. The query operations can be partitioned as, across many workers, and the gather operator will combine the results before sending it to the client. This shows how much we are able to reduce the execution time for TPCH queries when running on a machine with 32 physical cores. For most of the queries, we see more than a 16 times improvement. There are a few queries that does not scale that well, and these queries require multiple gather operators to be efficient, and we are working on uh, supporting that. So, there are two main reasons why Postgres is faster than MySQL. One is that hash join is used. And the other one is that nested loop joins are more efficient than using heap-based tables. So it would be good to have support for heap-based tables in InnoDB too. And for hash join, in PolarDB, we have modified the MySQL optimizer to take hash join into account. Or at least it would be good to have an optimizer hint that we could use to force hash join without having to hide uh, the indexes. So that was my talk. Thank you for listening. And now it's time to contact me in the Slack channel if you have questions about the talk.